everyone, this is Sarah from Japan, and welcome back to another read-along. Today we will be reading out of the uh, book of Peter, 1 Peter, uh, chapter 1. Uh, let's get started. Okay, so, greeting to the elect pilgrims. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, to the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bith uh, Bithynia, I guess. <laughs> elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father in sanctification of the Spirit. For obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace be multiplied. A heavenly inheritance. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his ab abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled that does not fade away, reser re sorry, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation, okay, ready to be revealed in the last time. That's an awesome phrase. Yes, we are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation. Yes, ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice. Hallelujah. Yes, we greatly rejoice. Uh, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by various trials. How many of us are going through trials? I'm going through some a lot, all the time, seems like. In fact, sometimes I feel like my life is a... Uh, is uh, like riding up hill in roller skates. <laughs> All right, anyway, uh, verse 7, that the genuineness of your faith being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, though it is tested by fire. You know, gold is actually uh, uh, kind of processed through fire. You know, you, you, it's in the rock, but it has to, you have to burn off the dross to get the gold, you know. Okay, though it is tested by fire, may be found to praise, honor, and glory. Uh, at the revelation of Jesus Christ, whom have not, having not seen you love, okay? Whom having not seen you love. Though now you do not see him yet believing, you do not see him yet believing, you rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Okay? So this is the re reward of our faith is, is uh, the inexpressible, you know, uh, joy, full of glory that we will be you know, in heaven with Jesus Christ, if we persevere, yes? Of this uh, salvation, the prophets have inquired and searched carefully, okay? Who prophesied of the grace that would come to you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ who was, with, who was, was in them was indicating when he testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glories that would follow. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, See how blessed we are? But to us, the prophets say they, they long to see what we see. You know, I know what we know. All right? they, we get to see it, not them, though, you know? Um, to them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to look into. Okay? Living before God our Father. Therefore, gird up the loins of your mind. Gird up those, gird up the loins of your mind. Be sober. Rest your hope fully upon the grace that is brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lusts, okay, as in your ignorance. But as he who called you is holy, you, ye, sorry, as, but as he who called you is holy, the Lord is holy, without sin, spotless, pure, you also be holy in all your conduct. This is a commandment. This is not a, you should be holy. This is not you need to be holy. This is you be holy. Okay? So you cannot stay in your sin and be holy. No. No, you can't. You need to be sanctified. You need to repent. Um, in order to be sanctified, you got to repent of your sins and ask for forgiveness. Ask for those sins to be washed away. Okay? And if the Holy Spirit convicts you over a sin, that means you still need to repent of it, okay? Um, you don't get, you know, your whole slate washed clean. I mean, up until now, you might have, you know, the sins that you committed before you were saved might be washed clean, but uh, the sins you commit afterwards, after being saved, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you and you're feeling guilty, you've got a guilty conscience, that's the Holy Spirit pressing on your heart. That means you need to repent of it, okay? You need to repent. That is how you get. That is how you find holiness, okay? 
and without holiness, nobody will see the face of God. Paul said that. Okay, look that up. All right, so, uh, yeah, so as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to former lusts as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, uh, conduct, conduct, sorry, can't speak, right? Because it is written, be holy, be holy, for I am holy. Okay, I believe that's in uh, Psalms, Psalms, what were they? Like Psalms 37 or something, no. Uh, no, Leviticus 11, 44. So, and if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, yes, your work will be judged, okay? There's so many people that say, we don't need works, grace is all we need. If we needed works, you know, then grace wouldn't matter. No, it says here, and if you call on the Father who without partiality judges according to each one's work, W-O-R-K, that is uh, found here in verse 17, uh, conduct yourselves throughout the time of your stay here in fear, knowing that you were not redeemed with corruptible things like silver or gold from your aimless conduct received by tradition from your fathers. That's not what redeems you, okay? But with the precious blood of Christ. It's the, by his blood that we are redeemed, okay? And our response, you know, to his redemption for what he did for us is to become holy through repentance, Gotta repent, okay? So, uh, sorry. But with the precious blood of Christ as, a, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, he indeed was foreordained before the foundation of the world, okay? But was manifest in, the, in these last times for you, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory, so that your faith and hope are in God, the enduring word. Okay, since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another fervently with a pure heart. This is important. We need to love each other with a pure heart. You know, we don't love somebody just because um, they put little hearts on your Facebook page, you know, or they like what you say all the time. There's so many people, you know, that uh, uh, there's a lot of love on the internet, you know, um, between Facebook friends and things. Oh, I love you, my brother, my sister, I love you, this, or, you know, um, you make my heart, you know, sing or whatever, you know. There's all kinds of things that people are writing, you know. And it's good to be show brotherly love, sisterly love, as long as it's not, you know. I don't recommend uh, calling people sweetheart or darling or things that should be reserved for your uh, spouse. Um, it's good to show... Um, that, you know, it's good to tell people you love them. It is good. But it seems to me like that as long as somebody um, is agreeing with our view, our viewpoint, and as long as their viewpoint aligns with ours 100%, we love them. The moment there's any little bit of disagreement, suddenly the delete button, the unfriend button kicks in, you know? And so that's not, it's not loving, that's not loving somebody with a pure heart, you know? That's a self-serving heart. That's not a pure heart. Okay. I hope you all can understand what I'm trying to say here. Okay. Um, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible, through the word of God, which lives and abides forever, because all flesh is as grass, and all the glory of man is the flower of the, of the grass. The grass withers, and its flower falls away, but the word of the Lord endures forever. Okay. Now, this is the word by which the gospel was preached to you. Okay, so let's go on to 1 Peter chapter 2. Oh. Okay, well, my internet decided it was going to cut off and cut on and come back on again, so hold on. Well, I think that, uh... Oh, I hope I was reading the right chapter. <laughs> oh, yes, I was. Oh, it's back on. Okay, what's this doing? Hold on one moment while I figure out what this is, what the problem is. All right, so. Um, hope you all are having a nice summer. It's been hot. Ah, oh, here we go. So, what's the deal? It's not showed up and then it disappeared. 
suddenly I can't get to that. All right, well, fine. Um, okay, it's doing something weird. So I'm just going to then just read from my King James Version here. You know, I have this aside. It's kind of hard to read. I mean, I read normally the uh, old King James. Um, if you can see that, it's kind of worn. King James Version Bible, normally. I can read it in my head pretty well. It's The problem is reading it out loud, it ties up your tongue. So, but anyway, um, since the computer does not want to cooperate, I'm going to read to you uh, chapter 2 of uh, 1 Peter. All right, so, uh, 1 Peter chapter 2. Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisy, hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word okay that ye may grow thereby if so be ye have tasted tasted that the lord is gracious have you tasted the lord lately he is gracious to whom coming as unto a living stone disallowed indeed of men but chosen of god and precious ye also as lively stones are built up a uh, are built up a spiritual house and and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. What are the, spir the spiritual sacrifices? One of them is, was mentioned before, the sacrifice of praise. Okay? So, uh, acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. There, wherefore, also it is uh, contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded, shall not be confused, shall not be, you know, they'll not be confounded. Okay? Unto you, therefore, which believe, he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. You know, so the, the builder's stone that the people, you know, the stone that the builders rejected is the cornerstone. So, and a stone of a stumbling and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto... Also, they were appointed. See, because they don't really want a Savior. They don't want anybody to be accountable to. That's why Jesus Christ is a stumbling block to, to people who don't want to believe. Because they don't want to be held accountable. You know? They want themselves to be the center of their lives. They want to be their own little gods. That's a problem. Okay? So, uh, anyway... So we're being dis so in a st in verse eight in a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense even to them which stumble at the word being disobedient whereunto they also were appointed but ye are a chosen generation ye are a chosen generation a royal priesthood we are royalty we are the sons and daughters of God praise the Lord okay a holy nation a peculiar people. Have you been called weird or wacko or Jesus freak or whatever? Praise the Lord if you have. My whole family thinks I'm weird. It's okay. You know, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of the darkness into his marvelous light, which in times past were not of people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtain, obtained mercy. Dearly beloved, I beseech ye as strangers, you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may be, they, they may, by your good works which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. Okay? Submit yourselves to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Hmm, interesting. Submit yourself to... Uh, to every ordinance of man for the Lord's sake. Okay, so that they will not curse your, your Savior's name. Talks about this in Romans 13, I believe, as well. Okay. So, whether it be to a king as a supreme, or unto governors as unto them that are sent by him for the punishment of evildoers, and for the praise of them that do well, for so is the will of God, that with well-doing you, you, you put to silence the ignorance of foolish men, Okay, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. As free, but not using your freedom, not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness. Do not take advantage of the freedom you, and liberty you've been given in the grace of Christ. Okay? So we're not given this, this grace and this freedom to commit sin. We're given it to, you know, glorify the Lord. So honor all men. Okay? 
Okay, so it says free for, but as servants of the of God, so as a free, sorry, as free and not using your liberty for a cloak of maliciousness, but as servants of God, honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king. Servants, be subject, be subject to your masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the froward, even the evils, evils and, and cruel masters we are to be subservient to be mm. you know subject hmm? all right so uh for this is thankworthy if a man for conscience towards god endure grief suffering wrongfully okay for what glory is it if when ye ye be buffeted for your faults ye shall take it patiently but if you when you do well and suffer for it you take it patiently this is acceptable with god for even hereunto, where ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example, that we should follow his steps. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. He didn't, he didn't return, you know, the curses which were thrown at him, you know, which we so often do. If somebody says something nasty to us, we're, we're bound to retort, you know. So, um. Uh, when he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to that that judges right, righteously, who his own self bare our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, being dead to sin, sins, should live into unto righteousness, by whose stripes we uh, ye were healed. By his stripes we are healed. Okay? For ye were as sheep going astray, but now returned unto the shepherd and the bishop of your souls. Okay, so that concludes uh, chapter 2. Of our uh, first Peter. Okay? Now let's look at, uh, real quick, chapter 3. Likewise, ye wives be sub subjection. Oh, sorry. Likewise, ye wives be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by conversation of the wives. This is quite a challenge for me. My husband is an unbeliever. And he doesn't want anything to do with, with the Lord Jesus Christ and his family, even less so. Okay, he tolerates me being a Christian, but his family totally prohibits it. But every once in a while, the Lord opens up an opportunity for me where he sees something scary or, you know, or terrifying happening, or he'll see something on the news that uh, clicks with what I've said before, and he'll ask about it. And it's those rare opportunities that I can talk to him about that. But uh, my conduct speaks louder than my words, though. He sees that I am uh, faithful in prayer. Um, I pray often in our bedroom and he can see that going on and uh you can see that uh, my what i say about the lord I, I try to mirror in conduct so you know um but anyway while they have, behold your chaste, chaste chaste conversation coupled with fear i don't talk about things that are improper but usually godly things whose adorning let it not be at that outward adorning of plating the hair and wearing of gold or of putting on apparel I don't even wear makeup. Okay, but let it be hidden, okay? Let it be hidden, the, let it be the hidden man of the heart, in which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God, uh, of God, of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in um, subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid of with any amazement. Okay, likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Yep, men, you need to honor your wives as well. Okay? All right. Uh, and, uh, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind. Be ye all of one mind. Having compassion one another, love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous, not rendering evil for evil, or railing for railing. You know, you don't fight back and argue and fight. And, and this, is, this is going to be a tricky thing, you know. Especially now, I mean, everything is, you know, rush, 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 go, 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 and everybody's already, you know, everybody's nerves are on edge all the time, it seems, you know. It's really hard not to rail back. But let's pray for self-control, okay. But, uh, con contrary wise blessing knowing that ye are therefore thereunto called that ye should inherit a blessing for he that will love life and see good days let him refrain his tongue from evil 
and his lips that, that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, righteous, and his ears are open unto their pride, uh, unto their prayers. Did you hear that? For the eyes of the Lord are are over the righteous. He's watching the righteous, okay? And his ears are open unto their prayers. You want you want the Lord to listen to your prayers? You need to be righteous, okay? But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. Feel that? Right and. Who is he that will harm you if ye be followers of that which is good? Who will harm you if you follow that which is good? But, and if ye suffer for righteousness' sake, happy are ye, and be not afraid of their terror, neither be troubled. Okay, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts, and be ready always to give an answer to every man that asks you, a reason of the hope that is in, in you with meekness and fear. It is important that we be able to an answer those who ask us about the hope that is in us. Can you do that? Are you capable of doing that? Okay, if you're not, if you're, if you're doubting, you know, yourself or you're not confident in your ability to give a reason for the hope that is in you, it's because you're not in the Word and you're not in the Spirit. You need to get in the Word. You need to get in the Spirit. Repent. Ask Him to fill you with, your, with His Holy Spirit and give you Holy Spirit discernment and start reading His Word. Okay, get to know the Master. Okay? So... Having a good conscience that, whereas they speak evil of you as of evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your, your good conversation in Christ. Oh, we've heard of this before. Yeah. Having a good conscience, whereas they speak evil. There are so many Christians who will speak evil of you as evildoers. They will say that you're evil or you're not really a, truly a Christian. They'll falsely accuse you. Accuse your good conversation in Christ. Like when you talk about the harder truths of, of Jesus Christ and his love and how we should respond like by repenting and stuff like that. I tell you, some Christians will throw a real tizzy fit and they'll even make videos to, to rebuke you with. It's got that bad, you know. I find that uh, um, it's usually never non-believers or non-Christians that attack but believers, people of, the own, of your own flock, are the ones that are going to come against you. If you say something that you know, they don't like, that's not comfortable, that makes them squirm. But I tell you now, if I say something, if I am doing a read-along, and that's, this is what it is. I am reading the word of the Lord, word by word, okay? I am reading the Bible. These words that you're hearing... It's what I'm reading. I'm reciting what's off of here, okay? And if there's anything that I'm reading that's making you squirm, that isn't me convicting you. That is not me judging you, okay? That is not, being, that is not me being legalistic. And quite frankly, I'm quite tired of ignorant Christians saying that. If you're squirming because of something you're hearing on one of my videos, that's the Holy Spirit convicting you, and you need to repent. That is something the Holy Spirit is telling you. Hey, you have this issue in your life that you need to deal with. You need repentance. You need to ask the Lord, what is it that I'm doing wrong that I'm feeling uncomfortable right now? What do I need to repent of? The Lord is telling you to repent then. That's not me, okay? So let's get that straight right now, okay? These are read-along videos. That's right. That means I am reading along in the Word. Okay? And like I've been telling people in almost every video, okay, you need to read along with me. Please, I always start with, please open up your Bibles to whatever chapter so that you can read along. There's a reason for that. And I've made that abundantly clear. Okay? You need to know what the Word of God says. It's not what Sarah says. This is not Sarah's opinion. This is the word of God. Okay? And if you're squirming in your seat, that's not me. I'm not being judgmental. I'm not being unloving. I'm not being legalistic. That's the, that's the Lord himself. And there's so many more facets of love, you know, than just the, the, the fuzzy, comfortable, you know, rainbows and butterflies type of love, okay? There's also something called tough love. It tells you, you know, it's like a mother who tells her son, you better stay out of the street or you're going to get run over. 
you know? That's not hateful. That's warning her child because she loves her child, okay? If, you, if your father says, hey, don't play on the train tracks. If you play on the train tracks, I'm going to get angry and you're going to get spanked. Is that unloving? Or is that the father protecting his child? So some, just because you hear something that you don't like, that's uncomfortable, doesn't mean it's unloving. All right? That's the father telling you. And the father loves you so much. You know, he doesn't want anybody to perish. That's why he sent his son to die on a cross, to bear all of that humiliation and all that pain and suffering. Because he loves you. He loves you so much that he chose to send his son to suffer for you. He sacrificed his, his only son for you. Okay? And Jesus Christ, he loved you, that he willingly took that for you. That's how deeply he loves, loves you. And he doesn't want anybody to perish. This is why he tells us these warnings. Okay? He gives us these warnings. So don't shoot the messenger. Okay? If, if you have a problem with the message, maybe you got to talk to the one who wrote it. You know? Talk to the author. Talk to the one who made the message. Okay? Ask him what does he mean by that. And soften your heart and be willing to grow. Okay? So anyway, um, so having a good conscience, uh, whereas they speak evil of you as evildoers, they may be ashamed that falsely accuse your good conversation in Christ. I get this all the time. I just got this yesterday. In fact, one of the people who commented on my videos um, unfriended me. He said I was uh, impatient and unloving and not bearing the fruits of patience and long-suffering. But I bore with him and his ignorance and his accusations for over two hours, and then he unfriended me. I did not unfriend him. Go figure. So which one is not long-suffering? Anyway, so, for it is better, verse 17, for it is better if the will of God be so that ye suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Okay? So we should count it in all as joy. We're doing something right, you know? For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring to us, bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison, okay? Which sometimes were disobedient. When once the long suffering of God waited in the days of Noah while the ark was preparing, wherein few, that is, eight souls, were saved by water. The like figure wherein to even baptism doth also now have sa not also now save us, not the putting away of the filth of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into, into heaven and is on the right hand of God, angels and authorities and powers being made subject unto him. Okay, so chapter four, I'm gonna continue reading. Uh well, this is three minutes already, but uh, yeah. I'm gonna close this video for now. And I'll come back later with uh, chapter uh, 4 and 5. They're quite short. So um, if you have a prayer request, please let me know. I love you all. I really do. And I pray that uh, you all receive truth. And I pray I do these videos so that, you know, people will know the truth about the Lord Jesus Christ and what our part is, how we should be responding to his salvation for what he did for us, okay? Uh, salvation and, you know, what, you know, what he did for us is amazing. I can't even, you know, put it into words, really, sometimes. You know, it kind of chokes me up. But he doesn't want any of us to perish. He really doesn't. Okay? So if you're backslidden, please heed, heed the words that I'm telling you. These are not my words. These are the Father's. He genuinely, he genuinely loves you. Okay? He doesn't want, he does not take pleasure in seeing the wicked perish. He really doesn't. Okay, so now is the time to get right with the Lord. Seek him while he can be found. Okay, so um, until next time I'm out, uh, if you have a prayer request, please let me know. I bless you in the mighty name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Bye.